I'm Rachel Smolkin with Politico. We turn now to our Turn the Table with CBS's Nancy Cordes. Nancy, the big news of the week, the surreal Anthony Weiner news conference. What do you make of that and his chances at this point? Well, he certainly got an array of politicians uh, urging him to get out, Rachel, including now uh, the leader of Democrats in the House, his former leader, Nancy Pelosi, who said today that she thinks that he needs to perhaps get some therapy and that he should do that out of the public eye. I mean, the interesting thing is that he and his wife seem to expect this to happen, uh, despite the fact that they got into this race several months ago knowing that there was another shoe that was going to drop. So, you know, if they got into the race knowing that that was going to happen, one would assume that, you know, they, they planned for that and they're going to stay in. And you mentioned his wife, Huma Abbott, in a very public moment for her. Some would say a, a slightly disconcerting public moment for her. What did you make of, of her time, her public time at the news conference? Well, I think, uh, you know, unless you're really in that situation, in that relationship, it's hard to judge someone's decision to stay with their partner uh, despite all of all of these things happening. Uh, what I think is a little more confusing is why she's been so encouraging of him to run for such a an important public office knowing that uh, that this was in in his very, very recent past. You know, she has been one of his hugest cheerleaders all along. She's participated fully in sort of all these articles about how he's completely rehabilitated. She talked about how she was firmly in his camp when he decided to run. Uh, no second thoughts. Uh, and yet we now know that he has been struggling with some of the things that have been plaguing him uh, as recently as a year ago and perhaps more recently. So it's kind of perplexing. When the Anthony Weiner news really overshadowed the other big story of the week. That was President Obama's economic speech. Some partisan divide there about big moment versus retread. What did you make of that speech? Well, uh, there were certainly a lot of Republicans on Capitol Hill who were waiting to pounce on whatever the president proposed in these speeches. So far, though, uh, the response has been uh, sort of a collective, huh, you know, because they don't feel that he has put forth much in the way of substance yet uh, that they can really sink their teeth into either positively or negatively. Now, the president has said he's going to be making a series of speeches and that he will roll out some of the uh, substance as the weeks go on. Uh, but Republicans essentially have been saying, and the leader of the Senate, of the Senate Republicans rather, uh, Mitch McConnell said directly, you know, we over here kind of give a collective eye roll at this point when the president pivots to jobs, uh, particularly because they feel that this is something that he does uh, when there's something that he wants to draw attention away from or when he's looking to sort of fill the space. Uh, so in their defense, uh, you know, he hasn't said much of substance yet, uh, nothing new. In his defense, the White House would say, look, we never pivoted away from jobs in the economy, but we want to bring a focus back to it right now. And no summer of the week would be complete without at least a mention of the royal baby, which brings us to our feature question of the week. What did you think of the royal baby coverage, over the top or just the right amount? Both. I thought it was over the top and it was exactly the right amount and I could have taken even more. I mean, you know, I don't know what it is about a baby, but, you know, I think you, you can't you can't do too much baby coverage. And this was an especially cute baby. Uh, and I was very proud that I called it uh, on George. Uh, I knew it was going to be George. I had it all <laughs> along in the in the office you won pool. The pool. I didn't see Louis coming. Louis like came out of nowhere. I w you know I have to admit I didn't have that anywhere on my radar screen, but uh, you know it can get a little bit uh, depressing covering politics all the time. People are always going after each other. So when you have a happy story like this one, you know you can. Uh, really indulge and enjoy yourself. So I didn't think it was too much. <laughs> Everyone loves a baby. And so give us a preview of Face the Nation. Will there be more royal baby coverage or who should we look for on the show? <laughs> Well, uh, you have to ask Bob Schieffer about that, but I can tell you uh, that Congressman Mark Rogers of Mich Mike Rogers rather uh, of Michigan is going to be here along with Senator Mark Udall of Colorado. They're going to be talking uh, particularly about the NSA and about the amendment that caused so much controversy this week 
regarding whether there should be limits placed on what kind of data the NSA can gather. That amendment failed narrowly, but it shows there there is a lot of angst uh, in Congress about the power of the NSA and a lot of discussion about whether it should be reduced. So uh, Congressman Rogers, Senator Udall, and others will be here to discuss that and much more on Face the Nation. Great, and some very interesting uh, ideological divisions. They're, they are not the usual Democratic-Republican split, so that should make for an interesting lineup. Absolutely. You know, this was really fascinating because in the beginning, it seemed like it was just members on the very far right and the far left who had a problem with uh, some of the programs that were revealed by Edward Snowden. But over time, uh, it has really become something that members of all political persuasions, just all across the spectrum, have stopped and said, you know, we're not really comfortable with this. Our constituents aren't, aren't comfortable with this. And, and this amendment to limit the power that the NSA has uh, only failed very narrowly in the House. It was almost 50-50. So it, it shows that this is not an issue that's going to go away anytime soon. Well, thank you very much. That does it for this week's edition of Turn the Table. We'll see you again soon. Thanks for having me. Thank you.